Hi, and this guide is going to be in two parts. In this video guide, I'll be going over the mechanics of the fight and what in general you can do to counter them. As such, it'll be suitable for all classes and specs that have this encounter as their artifact challenge. In the second video, which I'll be uploading very shortly after this, as I completed this as a Retribution Paladin, I'll be going over spec-specific advice on the different approaches I tried and a guide on what I found to work best. So in this encounter, you have three NPCs along with a number of environmental mechanics. There are a lot of mechanics which will either one-shot or almost one-shot you, so it's very difficult to recover from mistakes. Sigrun herself is not body pulled. You have to attack her to begin the encounter. She periodically throws fell fire puddles at your location unless she's crowd controlled. These don't one shot, but if you have to stand in them for any length of time, will do significant damage. She also casts an ability which turns her into demon form, whereupon she will cast an aura which does a lot of damage very quickly and ticks about every second. This will kill you if not dealt with. Sigrin can be stunned, and if you stun her as she's casting her demon form, then she won't complete the cast. She won't complete it when the stun wears off either. She can also be stunned in demon form, but when the stun wears off, she will still be in that demon form and the damage in aura will resume. So it's always better to do the stun before she turns to demon form. She does a telling shout when she's about to cast it, so or when she's casting it, it takes several seconds to cast, so you need to be listening out for that. The next NPC, the Jarl, generally just throws Whirling Axes at you. It doesn't seem to do much damage, so don't worry about it. But shortly after the fight begins, he shouts something and turns red. At this point, he will move towards you with the sole intention of smashing your face in. Ways to deal with this include stunning him, slowing him, kiting him, or making yourself immune to physical attacks. At other points in the fight where he shouts, he stands still and does a whirlwind instead, which is very damaging. It's the same shout, so it's the same tell. All you know is when you're going to shout that thing, he's going to do a thing that does a lot of physical damage. You can move away from the whirlwind, but he does suck you in, so you have to keep moving against the stream. If you stun the Jarl, either as he's shouting or even after he starts whirlwinding, then he will stop and not re resume when the stun wears off. The final NPC is a Farseer who spams Shadow Bolts at you. These can be interrupted, which means Sephir's Secret can be a really useful legendary on this fight. Every now and then he adopts a green absorb shield and begins a long cast. Again, this is accompanied by a shout, except you don't really need the shout in this case, he's surrounded by a great big green bubble. If this cast, called Ancestral Knowledge, goes off, it will deal a massive amount of damage. This is another one of those one-shot stroke, almost one-shot mechanics. Even in the best gear, it will come close to killing you straight away. You can only interrupt it when the Absorb Shield is gone, so you have to damage him to remove it before interrupting. While DPSing this mob, it is possible to kite it around if you take very small steps. If you move too quickly, he will just stay where he is and cast, carry on casting Shadow Bolts at you. This is a council type fight where health pools are shared, however they don't all have the same health, so the percentages go out of whack very quickly. Generally, I advise attacking the caster, the Farseer. Now, the environmental effects include orbs, runes, and lines of Valkyr. Every now and then, yellow orbs appear on the ground. If you run over these, they will heal you for a decent amount of health, but they don't last very long. If you've taken a drop in health and they've been up for a few seconds, I'd take advantage of them before they disappear. Unless, of course, moving two of them would put you in danger of taking even more damage. Periodically, three purple runes will appear on the ground. and They might start off as different sizes. They get smaller over time. When they shrink to nothing, they will explode, dealing, again, a massive one-shot stroke, near one-shot amount of damage. These need dealing with fairly quickly, and they're always located close to each other in the middle, fortunately. However, if another mechanic prevents you dealing with them all immediately, usually prioritise the smallest one first, because that's going to be the first to blow. Sometimes a set of runes will appear almost immediately, if not immediately, after you've dealt with the set. Because of the runes, you ideally want to be DPSing the mobs near the middle of the room, though not necessarily right in the middle in case fell puddles are cast at you. Finally, the lines of Valkyr. You get a short tell with this in terms of a shout and an amount of uh, a shadow type effect near you, which also indicates where they're going to come from, because at various points during the fight, a line of Valkyr will appear from a random side of the room, but there is an indicator if you look out for it. There will be a gap somewhere in their line that you need to get to. After a few seconds, they will rush across the room extremely quickly and all but one shot you if you're caught. Now, you need to get into that gap ASAP. It's no good waiting for them to start moving. This is not like uh, 
Cordana at the end of Vault of the Wardens where it moves slow towards you, they belt across to you. So you need to be in that gap before they move, otherwise it'll be too late. So in terms of the most devastating mechanics, we've got Sigrun turning into a demon form, the Jarl whirlwinding, the mystic casting, the runes, and the Valkyr. Failure to deal with a single one of these can easily mean game over. Be prepared to get frustrated. Sometimes multiple of these abilities will occur at the same time. This is why it's important to deal with them all immediately, but also make sure that you know how to prioritize them if that happens and locate yourself so that you can do so. This means being near the middle to deal with the runes. It means having a stun or movement boost ready for the whirlwind, having a stun ready to prevent Sigrun's demon form, being able to see around the room to see the Valkyrie lines. I don't know if it's bugged, but in some of the earlier goes, I, I didn't seem to always get a tell, but maybe it was just me or maybe it's something that was bugged and hot fixed, who knows. So, but you do need to be able to see around you. You need good vision around you. Once you get the health down to about 50%, it seems to me, then certain mechanics will stop happening. You seem to need to reduce Sigrun's health down to about 20%. At this point, it's likely you'll have killed the Jarl and the Farseer won't be far off. At that point, the encounter ends. Now, as you get close to the end, the only mechanics that seem to happen are the Lines of Valkyr and the Farseer's long cast, the Ancestral Knowledge. However, they become increasingly frequent, almost to the point where they're being spammed. It's almost like Line of Valkyr rush in. Then he does his bubble and cast. As soon as you've dealt with that, another line of Valkyrie, sometimes at the same time. If you have a targeted crowd control to use, such as snares, slows, single target stuns, etc., I would recommend making macros. This allows you to use the abilities without having to manually switch target and therefore potentially use it on the wrong target. This will not only save time, but reduce errors. It goes without saying that you want to burst DPS when you can, and the start of the fight is ideal for this before the really bad mechanics begin. Make sure you use a flask, good food buff, potions and drums, maybe even a rune to deal as much damage during your DPS cooldowns as you can. The quicker you get to 50%, the quicker you can forget about some of those mechanics. That being said, don't imagine that 50% to 20% is easy. This is where the remaining mechanics are more likely to run into each other and become more frequent as I mentioned earlier, but I would say 50% to the end of the fight is a lot easier than from the start to 50%. So those are the mechanics. It doesn't conclude spec specific advice on how to deal it, just general advice. But if you're a Retribution Paladin and you want to know what the Retribution specific advice is, I've got a video coming out very shortly on this one and I'll be putting that out almost immediately after this one. So I hope you found it useful as always. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share for further content. And until next time, I'll see you later.